Good morning, Grade Sevens. This is the last recipe in your program. It's on sector on week 20. It's sticky date puddings that I'm making. Now, you can't, most people like sticky date pudding and caramel sauce. I'm going to make both for you. You can make this either in a pan or a tin this size. That's a 20 centimeter round, quite deep cake tin. That needs to be greased and lined with baking paper, a circle cut out to fit exactly on the bottom, or you can make it in muffin tins. In school lessons, I usually make them in muffin tins because they bake more quickly and there's less chance of them sinking as well in the classroom situation. So, sticky date pudding is, as you would imagine, made with dates and it's pretty sticky with sugar, uh, in it as well as a really sticky caramel sauce. So this is not something that I would recommend you eat every day or even every week, but it is quite delicious. So it starts off with cooking the dates. Now make sure that you have bought pitted dates. That means they haven't got stones in them. And the recipe says one and a half cups of dates and one and a half cups of cold water. That then gets brought to the boil and this is where you get the sweet sticky sauce from so it seems like a funny way to start a cake but that's how it goes uh, there are such things as uh, we would call a boiled fruit loaf where you don't actually boil a loaf you boil the fruit before it goes into the loaf and that plumps and fattens up and, and really um, adds to the consistency of a fruit loaf and we actually did some of that soaking of the fruit. Remember we soaked your cranberries in boiling water and your currants when you were making hot cross muffins. This is the same sort of thing only there's more of it. Now that's that on there cooking. One and a half cups of dates and one and a half cups of water and here's one which I did earlier this afternoon. When it's cooled and cooked it gives you a sweet thick pulp which looks a bit like stewed apples with a lot of cinnamon in it but that's how the dates will cook down then the recipe says that you need to add um, bicarbonate of soda one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda that's your teaspoon that's your tablespoon always with bicarbonate of soda sieve it into whatever you use you're uh, using it with because it usually is lumpy and it's not very nice stuff on its own. So sieve the bicarbon. If your mixture is still warm, if you haven't let it cool enough, this will actually foam and bubble and fizz a bit. Uh, it won't so much now because this is nice and cool and I did this batch earlier this afternoon, but make sure it's well mixed in. So that's one of the raising agents, is the bicarbonate of soda, and the other one is baking powder, which is in the self-raising flour. There we are. So that's ready to use. Um, the dates, you can buy home brand ones, which are perfectly good to the Woolworths uh, home brand dates, but make sure there's no stones in them. These ones, medjool dates, are really quite expensive and they're absolutely delicious. They're fat and juicy, and these are used for quite a lot of, uh, I see, healthy, like high protein balls. These are much more sticky and fatter than those ones, and there is big price difference. So I wouldn't use these for sticky date pudding. They're too expensive, but they are delicious, and they're often the basis for um, mushing them all up and adding nuts and fruit and things and rolling them in coconut and it makes a kind of a so-called health bowl or a high protein bowl. So that's the dates. Um, the recipe, this is the first thing to do, get that going and while that's cooking the recipe then says that you need, you can see why it's sticky, three quarters of a cup of white sugar and 60 grams of butter and that needs to be creamed together now my hands are very clean i'm washing them all the time at the moment so i'm going to 
cream it with my hand. I quite like to do that with um, butter and sugar because the warmth of your hand helps to melt the butter a bit and helps it absorb all that sugar. And it, it is quite shocking when you see how much sugar is in it and then we add more in the form of a sticky sauce. So it's not something I would recommend that you have very often. But it is a treat and it's a pudding that's often in restaurants. A sticky date pudding for a lot of people who don't cook at home will pay quite a lot of money to have sticky date pudding in a restaurant. I wouldn't. I'd much rather have something much more fancy that I wouldn't make myself at home. There we are. You see how quickly all that sugar has been absorbed into the butter. But that doesn't mean that it's creamed. That just means that it's been absorbed. So now I'm using my hand like a paddle with my four fingers together and beat this a bit and soften it. You can even squeeze it through your fingers a bit to melt it and soften it. And I'd had the butter out of the fridge for quite a while before I started this. And remember, every time you take a wooden spoon out, make sure you've got a spatula beside you because you always need the two. Right, now what I'm going to do is wash this hand and now change to a spoon. You wouldn't be putting your hand in with flour and egg, but this is quite good at the moment to use your hand for this stage. And you don't need to spend too long on it because it's going to become easier to handle and more liquid-like in a way when we add the eggs to it and even more so when we add the date mixture to it as well. So just wash this greasy mess off. Remember, you need warm water for anything that's buttery or greasy. You can't wash dishes or your hands in cold water. Not when they're greasy like that. There we are. So they're just beginning to come to the boil. And they don't have to boil for long. But uh, it's just starting to foam on the top slightly. All right, now I'll change to the wooden spoon and I'm, again, bowl on the side and I'm pressing the back of the spoon into this mixture. It's a good idea to put a damp cloth underneath the bowl and that stops it sliding from underneath. It's easier to work. Always use a bigger bowl than you think you'll need uh, and that tends to keep the mixture in the bowl and it's just easier to handle. So there we are, then I'm going to add the eggs, two eggs, I've already put the bicarbonate into the date mixture and this immediately becomes more runny and it might even separate a little bit but don't worry about that because the, um, the flour will pull it all back together again and make it creamy again. There we are. Beautiful, fresh, free range eggs. See how yellow the yolks are. Really nice. I know some of you have got chickens at home, so uh, maybe you're not getting as many eggs from them now that the weather's colder though, but it's lovely to have them if you can. There we are. Then I'm going to sieve the flour in. One cup of self-raising flour. Now I haven't tried this with gluten-free flour. I don't really know how it would work. It probably would. Uh, I don't know if there's many of you that need that. No one's actually told me that, but some of your parents I know are gluten-free and some of you change your recipes when you do it at home so that your whole family can eat it, which is a nice considerate thing to do. There we are. So now it gets a bit thick, quite yellow. But don't forget, there's all this date mixture to add to it. Okay. Spatula. There's the dates boiling in the pan. So this batch that I'm making today are going to go across the fence to my neighbours next door. And the next batch that I make with that, I think I'll put in the freezer for another day for someone else. 
goodness knows when we'll be able to have visitors over and have afternoon teas and dinner parties. Let's hope it's not too far away. There we are, scrape right round all the flowers mixed in. Now add all this date mixture. You can see I'm into spatulas, can't you? I've got three on the go here. There we are, scrape all of that mixture out right round the pan. Always get the last out, all this costs money. Mix this through, either with your spatula or your spoon, it doesn't matter. Quite an easy, fairly quick thing to do. There we are. It's a nice, thick, creamy cake mix. Make sure everything's very well blended in there. There we go. Take all this away. And I'm going to use the muffin cases. Uh, I've still got the oven on from making the, um, the cinnamon and chicken phyllo pastry rolls, but I've turned it down from 195 to 180 and it's come down to that temperature now. And you may or may not remember when you made hot cross muffins, I did show you a little trick to use an oiled cup for measuring out the muffins to get them all the same size. So do that again. It's the easiest way to fill the tray. I'm um, just looking for the right cup. Let me see. Here we are. This one's one quarter cup. So a small amount of oil into the measuring cup, run it round right up the sides and then carefully with your quarter cup press it against the sides of the bowl and it should just plop out into the paper case just like that. And these again, when I was talking about portion control, meaning seeing how many servings you get from anything, this is a good way because you can you would serve probably one um, sticky date pudding each with some sauce per person, just like you would have one phyllo parcel or chicken roll per person as well. So I really like to make things ahead of time, especially if I know I'm going to be very busy or there's going to be a lot of people. I like recipes like this where I can freeze things and then reheat them uh, or as I showed you with the phyllo pastry, freeze them uncooked or unbaked and then bake them the day that we're going to eat them. And it saves a lot of time and a lot of stress when you've got a lot of people to, to uh, feed and lots of other things going on. These are starting to get a little bit small, so I'll need to fill them up a bit. There we are. That oil is still helping the mixture to come out quite nicely. Now I'm going to get more than nine, as it turns out. Certainly, I'd say there's another two in there. So once these go in the oven, right, that's enough of those boiling. And I'm just going to set these aside, let that cool down, and then add the bicarbonate of soda and add to another mixture to make another batch. So there we are. I might even get a dozen, I'm not sure. Scrape everything out as you go. I wonder what other cooking you're doing in the holidays. Um, if you are short of ingredients for any of these recipes that I'm suggesting, or you really haven't been able to go out and get them, then just please photograph the meals that you're making at home and write your evaluation just the way I've shown you. Now I emailed you all 
yesterday. Uh, I'm not sure what date that was yesterday, but the 19th of April, I think. I emailed you all to show you a sample of the evaluation which I completely filled in for you in red to give you an example of exactly what's required. Uh, and I am asking that we get a lot more work sent in so that you get the marks that you really deserve for this course. It's really quite easy to get a fair amount of cooking done from home. We've all got, well you have all got some extra time at home. Although I know some of you have had a lot of written work to do, but uh, we're all we're all in this together. So please send me your photographs and your evaluations. Right, those are ready for the oven now, and then I'll show you how to make the sauce while they're in the oven. All right, the muffins are in the oven. They're baking away. And as promised, when we make this at school, I only make one double batch of sauce uh, for the whole class. And each one of you usually comes up with one muffin in a bowl or a plate, and I give you a, a dollop of sauce, and it's delicious. But it's too expensive for you to all to make this at home all the time. They are absolutely lovely, the muffins, just with um, maybe a little bit of icing sugar over the top or some ice cream or custard perhaps if you like that but this is how you make the sauce the um, toffee or caramel sauce so anything with the word caramel usually means brown sugar and butter and lots of it so one cup of soft dark brown sugar and one cup of cream remember 250 mils is a cup there we are this was a 300 ml carton but my husband must have used 50 mils for apple pie the other night so i had just the right amount left and yes you hear correctly 200 grams of butter that's a lot you wouldn't be eating this every day anyway again it's delicious it's a treat so I'm going to stir that until it's melted and then let it start to boil and it will thicken and that will give you a, a good amount of lovely caramel sauce. It can also be used as a sauce over ice cream or uh, really any other dessert. So I'll put that on. I think they'll be about ready now. Just pull that off so that I don't burn that while I'm Dealing with these. Yes. Perfect. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Sticky date muffins or puddings. So we'll serve a couple of those on a nice plate later. Now they look a little bit dark. They're not burnt. Remember how dark the dates are in the mixture. It's because the mixture itself is dark. So I'm pleased with those. They've come out really well. 